afterwards or whatever, I'll have like the whole entire thing set up in the Dream Center as well. So I'm going to make a brief presentation here, but then if we can make our way over to the Dream Center on the fourth Sunday after the service, I can just lay out everything because it's a lot of history. We're talking about going back at least 120, 30 something years as well. And I feel privileged that Pastor has given me an opportunity to present what piece of history from my family has gone to um, basically be a part of history that you now know in the upcoming weeks. I know one year we had, you know, some soul food set up in the kitchen area and we had black eyed peas and corn bread, you know, everything we did years ago. People would bring things and, you know, some folk may not know what certain foods are. And it's a part of our heritage and our history uh, as African American. Uh, some of us still eat that way today. There are some people who still cook with pigtails. Uh, you know, uh, and uh, bones and uh, fat ass and that kind of stuff. Uh, they still do. And, and so that was the rich heritage that we had. And since we're in black history, uh, Mo Carter asked me about that and I thought it would be perfect to do it. Because uh, that J. Gross sings that something, right? And we normally dress up in an uh, African regalia or something like that, like the brothers are. Y'all give these brothers a hand. Amen. And we're picking up our lesson today. We've talked about commitment. We're going to talk about obedience. I'm going to title this message, Obedience, the Birthplace for Blessings. That's what we're going to title this, Obedience, Birthplace for Blessings. We're going to go to Isaiah chapter number one. Come on. Start right there. And kind of slow walk through it uh, until we get done with as many uh, scriptures as possible as it relates to obedience and just see what God says about it. Amen. Amen. Why don't we start reading? Um, I guess we'll start around verse number. Let's start with verse number 18. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. The truth is, we really need to do the whole chapter, but we'll do verse 18 and 19 uh, just for the sake of time. It says, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be like red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. One more verse. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Talk about obedience and birthplace, birthplace and blessings. Amen. It is amazing that God uses Isaiah to be the spokesperson for this particular message. God uses this prophet. Amen. His name means the Lord saves. Regardless of where we find ourselves or what we do in life, God always looks for an opportunity to save us out of whatever it is we need. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad that God saved me out of some of the stuff that I was in. And God is still in the business of saving folk. Amen. So the Lord speaks to Isaiah in a clear vision, amen. He lets him know that he has somewhat against the nation of Judah. He has a case against them, and he wants them to hear him, and he wants them to heed him and obey him. God wants to nourish them and bring them up. He said, I nourished you and brought you up like children, amen. But at the end of the day, you don't want to listen to me. Nothing can be more a heartbreaking or disgusting in life as to raise somebody, and then they talk back to you. That nothing can break your heart any worse than you spending all your time with a child and that child becomes disrespectful and never uh, respond to you in the way that you want them to. Too often in the lives of children, they think that we are trying to tell them what to do and we are not really trying to tell them what to do, but rather give 
give them good advice. One of the things we know for sure, those of us who are above the age of 50 years old, we've been through some stuff in our life, and what we share with our children is just merely for them to grab a hold to it so they don't make some of the same mistakes we did. Amen. And one of the reasons why we made certain mistakes in our life is because we chose not to obey our parents. Amen. Anybody here besides me didn't obey their parents? Because when you got a certain age in life, you decided you were grown and you were big enough to do everything that you thought you wanted to do until you find out, amen, that disobedient brings consequences with it. So at the end of the day, we understand that it's better to obey than to sacrifice. Come on, help me, amen. When we understand what God is really trying to say today, he wants us to understand that there's one word called the Sheba, S-H-E-M-A, and it's found in Deuteronomy chapter 6. God wants us to hear and listen attentively to the word and obey what he tells us to do, amen. There is no choice in the matter. 